Hi guys, it's Simon from SA Tuning. Um, it's been a while since we've come and had a chat with you live. Um, reason being, I was involved in a car accident. Someone came around the wrong side of the road uh, and pushed me off and, um, <clears throat> and decided to give me this lovely thing. Um, so I'm now stuck in a chair with, um, with a lovely broken leg. So that's always good. But what I thought we'd do is uh, I thought we'd take the opportunity um, just to sort of explain the differences and show you some differences between OBD uh, remapping and bench tuning. Now you might have heard both those terms, OBD is Onboard Diagnostics Port, um, and that's <coughs> basically we have tools like this for example which is uh, Dim Sport Genius, um, and what happens is it has a plug on the end which is an OBD plug, so this goes into your Onboard Diagnostics Port on the car, we plug it in, the tool turns on, we can select the car and we read the software off of the ECU via the OBD port with this tool here. Now, there are quite a few occasions when that's not possible. So for example, when there's anti-tune anti, uh, anti -tune protection on the uh, ECU, um, or certain manufacturers put that on to stop tuning happen. Um, and there are ways and means of getting around it and that's where bench tuning comes in. There are also other reasons to why bench tuning is quite important. Um, and that's because, say for example, someone has uh, another company's tuned the vehicle previously um, and they can put a block on the OBD port so you can't read their software. Um, that's quite annoying, but we don't do that here. Um, also, the ECU could be corrupted, there could be water ingress, there could be various reasons to why you need to do it on the bench. So what I'd do is I thought I'd show you a couple of ECUs. We've, the, these are ECUs that um, have come to us that have needed um, to be replaced um, by various customers. So we've got a couple here, so I thought I'd just show you the differences. now. This here, um, this ECU, is uh, looking a bit tired and a bit worn out, bless her. Um, so, <laughs> but we've already taken off the backing plate so we can show you what's inside. Now inside here there are lots of chips, there are lots of diodes, there are lots of things that do various bits and bobs. And what we're interested in, we're interested in this chip here. This is called the micro. And this is where a lot of data is held. Now, on some ECUs, you'll have what's called um, an external flash drive. And that's like another chip that holds the software for the vehicle, um, where it holds all the calibration data for the vehicle. Now, a lot of the times, it's already stored inside the micro. And what we do is we connect um, our tools to the ECU, and we power up the ECU. It's called on the bench. Now, with this one, this is an, uh, an EDC16 ECU. So what we can do is called BDM and that means backdoor module, um, and we have nice little adapters that help us do that. So what I thought I'd do is just show you a little bit. So for example, here we've got a little adapter, and all we need to do is slide it underneath, put it down on these programming pads, like that, link the tool, and read the software. And, and these are the nice easy ones to do, and that's great. <laughs> um, and unfortunately there are others. Now, when you start getting into later model vehicles, um, <clears throat> sort of uh, Volkswagen Audi Group after say 2008, um, for example, they have what's called Infian Tricore. Now, the Infian Tricore is actually the chip itself. Now, I don't know if you can see that written on there, but this big chip here is called an Infian Tricore. And it's manufactured by a company called Infian. Um, and tri-core means there's three cores. Like you have in a computer, you have dual core, quad core. Um, these have three cores in the chip, and that's why they're called tri-core. Now, the problem that we have with these, a lot of these are tune protected, so you can't go through the OBD port. And what you have to do is use these in what's called boot mode. Okay, so what we normally do is you see all the pins here that are inside here. This is where all, normally the multi-plug goes onto the ECU um, from the car's wiring loom. And what we do is we have a tool like this, which is called CMD, for example, um, and we literally connect the ECU with, with these wires in certain places, which makes it think that it's in the car, but we don't need to go through the OBD port. Then what we need to do is, because it's called boot mode, and the reason being is that we actually have to power the chip up separately. Now, that's where the OBD tricore lock comes in. It won't allow the ECU or this chip to be powered up in a way that you can read and write the software through the OBD port. So we have to do that separately. Now we have these pogo pins, uh, which makes life a lot easier. So we don't need to solder onto the board. And what we do is we literally pin out onto the board and then we connect the tool, for example, like this. This is just a really, really rough, it's, it's not exact, but it's just to give you an idea. And then what we can do is we use the computer and we power the, the ECU up um, with the boot pin um, and then we can read and write to the chip and the software on the chip without the need of an OBD port, which is great 
because then we can tune the vehicle, put the, do the ECU back up, put it back in the car, and off she goes and she's all tuned. So that's called uh, boot, boot mode for tuning that. Um, there are another couple, one other ECU. Now, some people, uh, you guys may never have seen an ECU. You may never have looked at one. That's what that one looks like in there. Um, and there is one more. Now, this, fortunately for us, we now have, this is, this is out of the BMW, okay? Um, this is a CP45. And what we have now is we have an, a, a way in which we can read and write to the ECU through the OBD port for all BMWs that have engine tricor. Now, this makes a massive difference because here you have underneath the case, but you can't, there is no big Infian Tricore chip. Now, what normally happens, and what we've had to do every other car before we had um, the opportunity to read and write through the OBD, is we had to take this board off of the back of the aluminium case. Now, we've already done this to this one, but as you can see here, there's all heat cement, and this is actually glued on. Now, on the back of the board, that's where the Infian Tricore chip is, and we had to actually solder and pin out on this chip to uh, to get a read and write out of it. Now it's not a problem for us. We've done plenty and we've done lots, and it's it's, it's, it's no no aggravation. But there's always an inherent risk. Now we've eliminated all this risk with all BMWs now uh, to be able to do it through the OBD port. So what I thought I'd do is just literally show you a couple of ECUs, show you a couple of ways that we do it. Um, just for your interest in that, more than anything else, just in case you've never seen an ECU or you didn't know how it was done. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, you can visit us at uh, www.satuning.co.uk. You can email us um, sa info at satuning.co.uk or you can leave a message on Facebook. Um, if you think you'd like a car uh, to be tuned with us, please feel free to give us Give us a contact us and we'll um, and we'll get a quote out to you. If you've got any other questions regarding BDM, Tricor, anything like that, we're always here to help. No worries. Awesome stuff. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching.